Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Hello, I have beheld the MLP movie, and it is good. Ah, out of a rating of 10. Oh, I'd say an 8. Hmm, okay. I'll have to judge it for myself when I go see it soonish. It's fun. That's all I ask for. Be fun. Alrighty then. And well, you ask for fun. Unfortunately, we're not going to get fun today. Oh, that's an optimistic start. <laughs> well, for you at least, I know I'm having fun with this one because <laughs> uh, today's episode, we are going to review Season 7, Episode number 11, Not Asking for Trouble. In this episode, an avalanche falls on Yak Yakistan and Pinkie Pie tries to convince Prince Rutherford and the proud Yaks to ask the ponies for help. Will she succeed? Will she fail? Soon to come. But our initial impressions, Silver. Ah, uh, Pinky, don't you know that sometimes natural selection has to take a big, big leap? <laughs> don't fight it. Just roll with it. In truth, this was a fun episode. I mean, Pinky is likable and adorable as ever. But all the trouble comes down to Prince Rutherford, who no longer is just exhibiting yak culture. He is deciding yak culture. And he's making the wrong decisions. And he's putting the well-being of his of his entire people at risk for his own stubborn pride. And, yeah, the guy's a fool, an absolute fool in my eyes. It's funny, though. In this episode, the ponies act like helping is their default, their natural instinct. But we've seen, thanks to the other timelines Twilight experienced, we've seen how much that can not happen. So it was a fun and, and cute episode for Pinkie Pie, frustrating for Rutherford and worried for the yaks. Very worried. I don't want the baby yaks to be brought low. No. True, true. And, well, as for me, this episode was a fun watch. It's no secret out there that Pinkie Pie is not my favorite out of the main six. But in this episode, she was tolerable. She respected the views of the yaks and how their culture works. But when push come to shove and she knew that they were in danger, she was willing to help. But... Eh, well, because of how stubborn um, Prince Rutherford was, they argued. And it's fun to see that even though that they argued, she still knows that helping is the right thing to do. Did she succeed? Did she fail? Well, um, you have to stick around to find out. So, with first impressions over, uh, you guys at home should probably pause this episode here if you haven't watched the episode yet. And, well, join us when you're done. And welcome back. So, we start off this episode with Pinkie Pie getting a letter from Prince Rutherford saying that she is invited to the... Uh, what was it again? The... Uh, not Oktoberfest, but... <laughs> uh, uh, Yaktoberfest? Yaktoberfest, yes. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, she was invited to the Yaktoberfest, the festival of doing yak things. So, yay, somehow she's doing yak things with the yaks. Firstly, I would have called it the Smashtoberfest, but there you go. Yeah, true, true. But still, um, is it Yaktoberfest? Like, oh gosh. Yeah, Yakslorberfest. That's it. Oh. Yakslorberfest. What I really want to know is how Pinky and Rutherford change letters when there's such a disconnect. The Pony Postal Service is truly... The unsung heroes. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, funny you mentioned that silver because next review we're gonna do that has something to do with the mail, but that's another story for another day. Mm. But still, um, letters went back and forth, and Silver got invited to Yak yeah, Yakistan to celebrate Yak Slurber Fest. And... I did. What you? You did? <laughs> no, I mean <laughs> Pinky. Oh gosh, you just said Silver. Oh, if I God. got invited to Yak Slurber Fest, I'd probably go under. And looked like I wasn't having any fun, just so everyone knew it. <laughs> just to be, uh, like, a, a pretentious hipster or some such. Oh, uh, my bad, then. Uh, but I was saying, Pinkie Pie got invited, and she's going to uh, Yak Soberfest. And she wants to be official. And Twilight crowns her as the official friendship something. I, I don't remember. Friendship ambassador? Something like that. But she she's pretty improvisational, turning a bookmark into a uh, commemorative badge or ribbon. Uh, still, it works. 
And with that, our hero, Pinkie Pie and Gummy, flies off to Yak Serverfest. Or Yak Yakistan in this case. And it seems like a long trip. Really, really long trip. I wonder why she didn't use the train. The sheep. She doesn't trust the sheep anymore. Ah, yeah, true that. True that. So upon arriving in Yakistan, she is greeted by Prince Rutherford, who welcomes her to Yakistan and introduces her to the culture of Yakistan. And that is smash everything. <laughs> yep, that's the that's the Yak default. They smash when they're angry, they smash when they're happy. It's like Colorado when the Broncos win the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> oh you. Uh, but still, uh, they smash, and there's a place for smashing, there's a place for eating, and Pinky can really eat. Like, she can eat like a yak. We knew that well in advance. Ah, uh, true, that. There's a place for sleeping, there's a place for music, and you should be required and enjoy the music. No talking aloud. Although, let's be honest, the yak, uh, interiors aren't that different from Zesty Gorman's impact on Canterlot. Uh, mm, true. <laughs> What does Zesty do anyway? Well, she basically made it all look exactly the same, but with minor cosmetic differences. Ah, yes, yes. Unmemorable. That's why I don't remember. <laughs> As are the yak interiors. They need Ikea. Ah, true that. Well, at least you get to see different locations. Like the carpet. The carpet ties the room together. Like the place for eating has a nice carpet. The place for sleeping has a nice Moon team carpet and the place where music has um interesting carpentry. Hey man, it all brings the room together. Indeed. And well, after all of the touring around, Pinkie Pie is made an honorary yak, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. I don't think she's an honorary yak just yet. She's still. They have the big smash up, and uh, Rutherford tricks her, makes her think that she uh <laughs> she. Crushed a, a stick of uh, great importance. Yes, and then, ha ha, joke, I got you, ha ha ha. Pink uh, pony fall for joke. Uh, that was fun. <laughs> and then, of course, finally nature says, you know what? I think it's time to thin the herd a little. <laughs> know what I mean? <laughs> know what I mean? Oh, yeah, and avalanche falls on Yakistan, and yeah, yeah, everybody's gonna freeze. And, Pinkie Pie here, well, she's worried because, well, there's an avalanche and they need to get rid of it. And Prince Rutherford's plan is to smash the snow. Smashing idea. Pip Pip Cheerio and all that rot. And yeah, they, they do so and yeah, it doesn't seem too well. And all the smashing seems to have more of an impact, like more avalanche. So yeah, no. Actually, it hits me, uh, pun intended, that Prince Rutherford and Coop from Magus XLR, you folks remember that? I do. They basically work by this, the same philosophy. People say, Coop, smashy didn't work. Oh, yes, it will. I just have to smash the right way. <laughs> well, at least he has a big giant robot to smash. That's right. Uh, but Coop could unsmash the... Yak Yakistan in just a few minutes. I'm sorry, I'm thinking of a character I like more than Prince Rutherford. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's true that. But still, with all this smashing, more snow comes down. And you know what? Prince Rutherford says, okay, no more smashing. We will get through this. We are a patient bunch and we will survive. We will wait for the snow to thaw. In the meantime, we shall enjoy the same things that we always done. But instead, we'll insert the word snow into everything. So, snow smashing, snow eating, snow listening to music. So, let it go. Let it go. Although, now I'm thinking of Doctor Who talking about space. Just because you put space in front of something, <laughs> it doesn't make it sci-fi. <laughs> yes, it does. Space mail, space dog, space suit. That's a thing. Yes. And it makes it futuristic, like the space so that, podcast that we're doing. Exactly, in Space America, at, <laughs> at least on my end. <laughs> Greetings from Space America. We are so sorry. We are so very, <laughs> very sorry. Uh, but still, <laughs> with everything they've gone through, like the snow thing is not working for them. And Pinkie Pie 
tries to reason with Prince Rutherford and you know what she 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 almost had enough of this and goes and takes for a walk until she discovers that hey um the young ones are cold and hungry and they need help but since the prince is too stubborn uh, how should I do this and well Pinky does the smart thing instead of telling Rutherford directly and hurting his pride she tells a story so in she tells a story in hopes that it will enlighten Rutherford on what to do which is smart which is smart do you agree it is smart i mean stories are often used as a means to convey morals and ideas the yaks tried to told pinky a story off screen uh about how they saved the world which i'm sure involved a whole lot of stomping and smashing but one, I have a hard time believing that, especially with the pony track record. Oh, you saved the world by stomping and yelling real loud. That's cute. That's real cute. But ultimately, uh, I think it is smart just to phrase an idea in the form of a story because it makes it more approachable. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, you, the prince could get the credit of, hey, we might ask for help because, hey, it's my idea, not Pinky's. And he would do that. He would do that. And the prince won't lose face. But instead of doing so, the prince says that the story or the goats in the story are pretty weak. They're weak because asking for help. And this here, well, right about this point here, it highlights that the Yaxer are a bunch of proud racists. I don't know. Rutherford is certainly very proud. And he's the one who sets the tone for the group. Many yaks are coming over the idea that they're realizing this isn't going to work. And yet Rutherford won't allow them to even consider asking for help. Which I ultimately, I think if he's the one who sets the, uh, the tone for their culture in this way, it's he who is doing the most harm. And therefore I sponsor a coup d'etat. <laughs> Put the little yak in charge. They'll do fine. Yeah, but at the same time, too, when it comes to the leader, the leader can't look weak. They, they have to put a strong face and have to be strong for their community and whatnot. But the right thing to do is always think of your people first. And even if that involves asking for help. But that's me thinking logically, I'm no leader, so I got no idea. And Rutherford here outright tells Pinky that when I was young, I was, I stomped so hard that I fell into a hole and it was covered by ice. I called for help and no family and friends came to help me. And I waited patiently till spring for the ice to thaw and I got out by my own and I survived. Because I didn't ask for help. And a lot of questions came through from Pinky. Like, how did you even breathe in? Like, all valid questions, really. She'd be a great YouTube reviewer. Uh, true Pinkie that. Pie for on, on YouTube would get like a million subscribers in a day. True that, true that. But Rutherford says, Nope, your honorary yak status has been revoked. You can go out. I slammed this invisible door. And with that, Pinkie Pie flies off to... Ponyville complaining to the group. And the group says, you know what, guys? We need to go and help. And so they do. And also, this is where Applejack asserts that helping others is the pony way. Which I, again, that's something that they take as a given. But we saw in other realms when the future where Chrysalis had taken over, the future where, where they were at war with Sombra, and especially with Nightmare Moon, Whoever's in charge really sets the tone for the world. True that. And so I don't think you should take it as just a given that helping is the pony's natural default. At least for the being six, they've always been there to help, no matter the cause or no matter what. At least for this universe. Because when we're talking about even... You know what? Now, even when you think about it, in Nightmare Moon's universe, Nightmare Moon was willing to help but she's getting something out of it. The worldly changelings were in charge, or changelings were invading and succeeded. Uh, the shaman, or Zakura, was willing to help because she knew that helping them was the answer to get 
things back to normal or things getting to the right track. But only after Fluttershy and Pinky were ready to skewer both Twilight and Spike. Oh, they learned their lesson. <laughs> I'm sh- I wonder how the conversations went after that. So, yeah, alternate future, you try to kill us. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Oh, well, um, um, I- I'm sorry. Although, s- slightly derailing conversation, but still waiting for Flim and Flam to get to meet Twilight again. She'll just blast them on principle. You killed the world! Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I-, I don't think they're even sorry. Like, did we make a profit? Yes, you did. Then not sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Uh, but still, anyway, getting back on track. Uh, our hero flies off to Yak Yakistan on a covert friendship mission. Do 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 do. Da 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 da. Put on your night vision goggles. Put on your Tom Clancy soundtrack. Put on your Mission Impossible or even Austin Power soundtrack, and let's get this secret mission a go because. Covert friendship mission is serious business. Super serious business. That's why Pinky, although she's putting on night vision goggles really in the day, she should really? be blind. Well, no, let's see here. That's the evening. I need to double check the gallery on this one. We've seen her use night vision goggles in the Crystal Empire in the middle of the day. She should be blind. <laughs> uh, you, you know Pinky. Pinky's Pinky. But anywho, um, they... Go through, they clean up the snow with magic, Rainbow Dash bucks the clouds, Twilight uses her fancy magic to make the crops grow faster a bit, and yeah, Fratishai tidies up the room, and so on. Um, food's ready, house decorated, and whatnot, and it took them the whole night to get everything prim and proper. It's because they had training for winter wrap-up. True that. And once that's done, the prince... Wakes up to discover, hey, um, all the snow's gone. Yes, our patience has done us good. See, we do not need help from the ponies. We are strong. Until he spots Pinkie Pie leaving the, uh, gates. He rushes through and stops Pinkie and tells her, thanks for everything. And you are now honorary yak again. And here's your helmet. Which is very heavy. And yes, that is, that's true. And Pinky states that to us with a hilarious outro, fourth wall break, and ends. Ends. Everything ends, but then nothing does. And so this episode was rather entertaining. I hmm, let, let's go to final thoughts. And Silver, what do you think, man? Well, I take some umbrage with the ending because basically Rutherford is saying. We'll accept help, but, on, but only if we don't ask for it, which means we give nothing, and but we expect everything. And I just like that is an intensely unhealthy attitude. I mean, if you can't have the, if you can't have the humility to suck it up and ask for help to, for the good of your people, there are ways to save face or help spin doctor it. Basically, I come away from this thinking it wasn't yet culture that really had a problem in party pooped. It's Rutherford. It, and I say it, coup d'etat, I'm all for it. I'll back you up. I'll bring snacks. You'll bring the pitchfork and torches. Huzzah! I'll just borrow it off my, my own cavalcade of uh, pitchforkers. <laughs> oh, yes, they're outside there waiting for you. Yes. But it does show the ponies being just good and kind and not not seeking reward or praise for helping others, which is a very healthy view. So basically everything Rutherford does wrong, they do right. And for me, with this episode, it's a mixed bag. It's In terms of just watching it without overthinking it, it's really enjoyable. I do like the story. It's really interesting and it's a fun watch. But once you go in depth a bit and think about the whole thing with Rutherford, like how could he have done things better, well, honestly, he could just ask for help. Being a leader is more than looking good, acting powerful, and making decisions. It's making the right decisions and knowing when to ask for help. Because you are a leader. You're not thinking about yourself. You're thinking about others below you and around you. 
And making the decision of I should also help is one of those things. And the problem here is his pride got in the way. It reminds me of Vegeta during back in the days of how he didn't want to ask for help. Now he's a bit better and we all like him for it. Right of first here, I won't call him the Vegeta of the Pony universe, but he needs a slice of humble pie. He can have rainbows. Oh, yeah, true that. But other than that, it does also bring up the question of how does weather work in Yakistan or even the Crystal Empire, to be exact too? Because we know that Cantalot and Ponyville have the Cloudsdale weather team and so on. And how does Yakistan work? I get the impression it's the same as the Everfree Forest. It just does it. It's close to the Crystal Empire where, you know what, no, it doesn't make sense too because the Crystal Empire without the heart spell has eternal winter. The heart spell kind of moves it away so that it has its own ecosystem. So won't that mean that pony geology or pony weathering system is really, really strange? Oh, that that's a given. Their world is at their command. Mm-hmm. True that. But they themselves are servants to the natural order. Spring must follow winter. Winter must happen. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. <laughs> but hey, um, at least we now know that even if the yaks have a natural flow of the seasons, pony help does work. Winter wrap up. Winter wrap up. Have you noticed that there hasn't been a, there hasn't been another winter wrap up episode ever? Not since that first one. Yeah, I noticed that. That's a little too bad. That's too bad. I, that was a very fun episode. I feel like they could do even more with that topic. Yeah, and you know what? There's more other than winter wrap up. I mean, wait, they did. Remember the one where, no, that was doing winter. Instead of winter wrapping up, they're winter unwrapping. Remember the one with tank? Oh yeah, where, where they're prepping for it. Yeah. I'd like to see for the song to wrap up summer, they go with death metal. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Summer wrap up, summer wrap up. Yep, yep, yep. And ask Rarity to play um metal on that two string guitar. Oh God, uh, I do hope that we get some of the previous team back, like Winter Wrap Up. We did get Gala. Well, else? Uh, Appaloosa. Did we get Appaloosa again? Well, Brayburn has made returns, and they played against Appaloosa. True, true. Well. What else do we gonna need? Uh, you know what? There's a lot of things that we asked for and probably we did get. But still, uh, there's season 8 coming. So, who knows what we might get for the future. So Who, eh, who knows hoping. what evil lurks in the hearts of ponies? Indeed. I take that back. There is no evil. Uh, true. Only good fuzzy stuff. Or so we think. <laughs> da da na But Annie, Silver, what are we going to review next week? Well, next time, we're we're not quite out of the snow yet. We're going to the frozen tops of the mountains as uh, Friends Forever t- tackles Soren and Rainbow Dash's adventure as they strive to climb the highest mountains and and outfly the the icy winds. So, we're going to be reviewing the Friends Forever issue, and it'll be good times. Indeed. And, hey, remember what I mentioned earlier before, bad weathers, uh, flying mail and stuff? Hey, it's, it has related to the um, next review we're doing. <laughs> uh, pointing it out doesn't mean anything. But anywho, if you guys would like to support the show, you, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get early access to this, the review show. You also get the video content and exclusives. And a huge thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Lurker Cat, Nimble Notorious, Star Stream, and also Best of Leg. Thank you guys for the awesome support. You have been really awesome. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And we will guys catch you next week with another amazing episode of the MBS show. See ya! Adios. So, Hulk smash. Hulk smash.